Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our special guest today is Walter Longo. Dr. Longo is recognized as a global leader in aging and nutrition with more than 106 peer-reviewed publications in journals like Science, Nature, Cancer Cell, JAMA, and others. We'll be back with our interview after this brief message from our sponsor. Hey there, listeners. It's your host of the weekly podcast, Redefining Medicine. I have a question for you. How much time do you spend ordering functional lab tests for your patients? Ordering from multiple lab companies for hundreds of patients can quickly turn into hours of admin time. But there's a new way to order lab tests that I'm excited to share with you. Rupa Health is a tool that lets you order 20 plus specialty labs in a single portal. You can order all tests you normally do from companies like Dutch, Vibrant, Genova, and Great Plains, and so many more. Imagine you're ordering a hormone panel for a patient that includes tests from three different labs. You have to log into three different websites to place separate orders and then come back weeks later to check tracking number and download results. Rupa eliminates all of that by having all ordering, tracking, and results in a single place and they also handle invoices, tracking shipments, automated follow-ups, personalized instructions for completing tests, and so much more. The best part about Rupa, it's free for all practitioners. Go to rupahealth.com, that's R-U-P-A health.com to join a live demo or sign up to see how it works. Now let's get back to today's show. We are so pleased to welcome Dr. Walter Longo to the podcast today. He is the Edna Jones Professor in Gerontology and Professor in Biological Science. He is also the director of the USC Longevity Institute. He's interested in identifying the molecular pathways can serve from simple organisms to humans that can be modulated to protect against multiple stresses and treat or prevent cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and other diseases of aging. Welcome today. It's so nice to speak with you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Of course. So what made you decide to get into anti-aging medicine? Um, I've actually been doing that since the very beginning. So I was a second year um, student in Texas, um, and um, I was actually studying music, and I decided to, uh, uh, that I was very passionate for um, aging research, and, and I thought that it was a, a great opportunity to, um, to have a scientific question that is very big, but at the same time have something, uh, work on something that was very relevant for uh, medicine and for diseases. That's interesting. So you were said you were working on music, and and then you just became interested in anti-aging. Was it, <laughs> how did that happen? Yeah, I think that uh, actually I was surprised that everybody else was not interested in in that more than anything else. So I just thought about uh, this is the most important thing for human life and human health. And uh, and to this day, I'm I'm very surprised that there is. Uh, uh, I mean, now it's it's expanding, and maybe you can even say it's exploding. But certainly. Uh, for decades, uh, it's been surprisingly under-studied uh, and underappreciated. So how important it is to focus on the actual aging process and not just you know waiting until somebody gets a, a disease and then intervening. That makes sense. Um, and you're speaking at the 29th annual um, A4M World Congress about fasting, mimicking diets in disease prevention and treatment. Would you mind giving our audience a preview of, of what your lecture will be about? Yeah, so the, the lecture is about uh, um, the, the fasting mimicking diet. And this particular lecture, um, in the past I've talked about cancer and I've talked about um, fundamental aging, and this is much more cardiometabolic, right? So the basic research and in mice, but also the clinical research and in, in the clinical trials, the human clinical trial trials uh, on you know diabetes and um, cardiovascular risk factors, and also the work that uh, my foundation clinics are, are, have been doing both in Milan and in Los Angeles in applying both the longevity diet, so the everyday the special diet that I described in in, uh, in my book, and and then um, the fasting making diet, you know how they can be combined 
together with a dietitian or a nutritionist into a program that, um, that for example, takes a lot of patients with uh, diabetes and working with their doctors uh, brings them back to uh, a non-diabetic state and uh, their drug-free uh, state. Okay, so you can actually potentially reduce uh, type 2 diabetes? Yeah, so the, the, the initial data in the clinical trials uh, suggest that we can reverse it, right? So we can uh, take a, a number of patients uh, and bring them from multiple drugs and hypertension and diabetes back to uh, completely healthy. Uh, now, of course, the randomized clinical trials are going to tell us uh, uh, how true is this for, you know, two, three hundred uh, patients. Uh, and, and so, but the, the, the early data suggests that we're, it's working. So, but, but yeah, we have to wait until... Uh, those and then eventually we have to make a decision also on FDA. Um, it's a nutritional intervention, um, but if it's treating uh, diabetes, if it's treating uh, metabolic syndrome, is preventing cardiovascular disease, those are all FDA regulated tracks. And so we might have to go to the FDA and, and begin the process of you know, what's called an IND and, and the process of developing a, a food-based drug, like a botanical drug for, for the treatment of and prevention of these diseases. That's so interesting that you can possibly do that. Wow. Um, so your diet um, has, has become very well known. Uh, would you mind sharing some tips and tricks that you give to your patients about the diet and, and also what it entails? Yes, yeah, so um, the, the longevity diet program entails, um, in t first of all, a pescatarian diet. So vegan plus fish, uh, maybe two or three times a week, uh, but only until age 65, 70. Uh, and also low protein, but sufficient, about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Um, and then that increases in the 70 year olds, 80 year olds. We, we've done, um, we published epidemiological studies that were showing that a 90 year old reporting a very restrictive and low protein diet was not doing very well. Uh, the 60-year-old was doing very well, the 50-year-old was doing very well, but the 90-year-old was not. And so there seems to be a, a point where people start losing weight and becoming frail, and that's when you have to change the diet. Um, then the longevity diet also includes uh, time restricted eating for 12 hours a day, right? So you eat for 12, uh, fast for 12. That seems to be a very good, uh, uh, very safe, not just good and effective, but safe. Mm -hmm. um, and then also includes... Um, the um, high nourishment, right? So the omega threes, the, 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 uh, some supplements if, if needed for those that might have vitamin D deficiency, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then also for those that are overweight and obese includes uh, um, uh, breakfast plus either lunch or dinner and one either lunch or dinner replaced with uh, uh, about a hundred calorie um, healthy snack. It could be a fruit, it could be a small salad, it could be uh, some nuts, um, but that's, uh, that we also see in the clinic this becoming uh, very effective combined. And then, of course, the fasting making diets uh, you know, done on average uh, in people that, that need it, say, three times a year, maybe four times a year, and everybody else maybe two to three times a year. So with the fasting mimicking diet, um, is there a stem cell component where they're released? Yeah, so, so we know that, um, of course, the, the molecular studies you do in mice, and you can get some ideas in humans too. So in humans, we know that it works. Mm -hmm. uh, in mice, we know that actually in the pancreas, in the muscle, uh, in the gut, uh, in, in, the, in the nervous system, we see that the, the fasting mimicking diet refeeding cycle turn on the stem cells uh, and, and, and begin a process of regeneration um, that is, seems to be involved in, in rejuvenating this, the, multiple, the various systems, right? So we've seen it in many cases, and, and now we're seeing you know, evidence at least consistent with that in humans, but again, we can uh, go and see whether our pancreas is regenerating in a person. We're, we're limited to uh, looking at that in, in a mouse. Very insightful. Well, thank you. I think um, our listeners will really enjoy this, and. It was a pleasure speaking with you. My pleasure.